Hey guys, this is how to do color palettes in Godot. As you can see, I can change the color palette and all the colors change in the game. Everything updates. So we're going to go over how to do this. Okay, first, before we get into how to essentially build your color palette system, this works, um, this isn't a shader, this is essentially modulating colors, but so it does have limitations. So let's say we have our sprite right here. Every sprite has to be white. That's one of our limitations. Also, we can't have multiple colors on one sprite. We have to separate each of the colors within each sprite. So what I've done is I have outlines around my sprites. And so I have a separate sprite that's called outline. And that outline is actually running a shader in which I update that outline color right here and override that with the color palette value for our outline. So let's get into how the system kind of works. First, I didn't want to list off each of the RGB values in the array because that would take like nine values just for three colors. It would have been much easier just to use hex code values. So you can see right here, I have a lot of hex code values, but I have a lot of scripts going over those hex code values. So first thing that has to happen is we have to set the, we have to convert the color to a decimal color. The reason why we do this is because Godot only reads color values from zero to one. While normal color values, we d we always go zero to 255. Well, I kind of find it strange that Godot uses zero to one, but I had to work with it. So I do here is I divide it by 255. Then we have to get the RGB values out of the hexadecimal. I had no idea how to do this. I found this online, so give me no credit for this. But essentially you do a whole ton of this stuff and essentially you get your red color by dividing the value by 65536 which i don't know why probably some like bit thing i'm not good with colors <laughs> then it gets the g value by using the r value and dividing by 256 and so on and this is how we get our colors but i'm going to go over even deeper how to import this into your project so let's start an empty project okay so essentially i have a test scene kind of laid out right now um i just have a sprite in here it's our car sprite let's get into it um So essentially I'm using a singleton to control the colors. I found that very easy and useful to do because singletons go through each scene. So what we're gonna do before we add the singleton, we have to actually make the script. So I do new script and I'm gonna call this, I don't know, global or you could call it color control controller, I don't know. And I'm gonna set the template as empty. And so now what we can do is project settings. We auto load our color controller. Okay, so now it's auto loaded. Okay, so I set up a couple of variables here. We have our color main, and then we have a couple of our variables, color outline and color background. Then we set our current. So essentially up here, this is where we set up our color palettes. So now we're gonna set up our RGB function first to get our RGB colors out of our hex string. So we're passing the parameter that we could set as hex string and we're setting it equal to string 0x, which is what Godot uses, what it does. And then we do hex to int. So fancy thing is when we're, when we're creating our colors, we have to set the hex to an integer value, then we can do the rest with it and convert it to a decimal value so we can actually use it. So Godot is very nice and has a built-in function for that so we don't have to apply extra math to our project. Okay, now we're gonna get our RGB value. So var r is equal to hex string divided by the weird number 65536. And then we're gonna set our G value, which is green. We get hex string minus r times the weird number. I don't know what it is. 65536. Okay, now we're gonna get our blue value. And that blue value equals hex string minus the red color times 65536 minus g times 256. So if you want any idea how this code works, go talk to the guys on Stack Overflow who came up with this or they found it somewhere else, I don't know. And then we're gonna return our color value. This is very important because this is how we're gonna get our colors out of these values. So we also need to set the one, which is our alpha value. So what was happening before is I was trying to set this up and I came into an error because I didn't do the alpha value. So make sure you have the alpha value set to one. Okay, so now we're gonna have to convert to decimal. So. We're going to do our, that function next. 
function des. I'm just gonna call it des for short or decimal. So now go. I can actually read these values correctly. Return color value dot r divided by six five fifty. No, it's not six five five. 255 value g divided by 255 and the value b divided by 255 so dividing by 255 gets us a decimal number which we are in turn able to use in Godot, and it can actually read the colors now so now we have a couple of our scripts so now we need to set up the color palettes into array values so we're going to array the three different colors we want to use you can obviously have more than three colors just do whatever you want to do so for this I I need to copy my colors also very awesome tool this is how i got my colors really fast i went to paletteprompts.com you can set the number of rows and this allows you to generate cool nice looking colors together that you want and it gives you the hex codes so i'm going to select my hex code right here make sure you don't copy the hashtag because it will not recognize so now we're going to set our arrays and these need to be on ready variables because we're executing scripts so now you can call the array whatever you want we can call it color one actually that's very inefficient we're just going to call this color one array okay now we are going to specify our values so what needs to happen is we need to convert to decimal after we get our rgb values out of the hex which will in turn this is our oh you see my mistake i did rbg i need to have rgb there we go okay so this is basically our outline so i'm gonna have that as the second color the first array color is gonna be our main color which i'm gonna make the brightest one and then the background color will be the second brightest so now we're gonna do the same thing decimal out our rgb values and now we put a comma in between those and now we have our main color and an outline now we want the background value so we did the exact same thing And there you go. We have an array of all three of the colors and we have them converted correctly. So now it's just gonna be up to applying these colors and telling the objects to have it. So you could do this of one of two ways that I know of that would work nicely. You can have it so the color controller goes through each of the nodes in the scene tree and checks if they're in a specific group. So if you call it color main group, then it would be like, okay, let's apply color one or our color main to that uh, node because that might be inefficient and cost heavy uh, performance or in a specific object you can call a script from our color controller and tell it to change to that color so i'm going to do it the first method because i found it less cost heavy and whenever we instance new objects we'd have to recall the thing so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting our oh before we need a current color palette the one that we're using so we know which one we're using so we call this current color palette. And I'm going to set this to color one. So very important. I guess you can just use the entire variable name and then they'll be able to find it. We'll just go with that because that's easier. You could just say color one and then they could string the array. So you, it, whenever you're checking, but we're just going to do array. Okay, first thing that we can do actually is setting the background color, which we can do straight inside of the color controller. So we're gonna make a function for that. Got functions for everything around here. Updates, background, color, day or two parentheses. Then to update the background color, you could do it one of two methods. You can actually try changing the settings value, or you can do it the method I'm using right now but called visual server dot defaults background color and now we can set it so now we need to get we need to get our array uh index because right now this is index zero this is the first value in our array index one is our second value and index two is our third value so now we can reference this value by calling the getting the array index zero so we're gonna put this in a function because we can and i think it'll be a lot easier than typing out everything so we're going to put in another function and we're going to call it gets palette array value. We're going to do array value that we want to use inside of one of our parameters. Okay, so now return 
get this is very important get actually finds the um the color palette variable because if you just um if you just wrote the variable in there it just return a string it wouldn't return the variable so using git finds the actual variable and returns that instead of just a string so we could just do it this way and then we can do this for the array value and now that basically specifies right here we could specify if we want to go zero one or two okay now what we can do is we can do git palettes array value then we can call value zero now this except our background is actually value two so we're going to be using value two instead now basically we have our color system now we can apply it to our car after doing all this this is kind of a it might be a bit complex but it's worth it in the end because now we can instantly set the color and not having to deal with this code this is how we're going to get our colors now in our car we're going to add a script this is going to change our car color so function underscore ready it's called when it's created okay so now we can set modulate equals color controller because it's our singleton so it'll exist in every scene dot get palette array value zero um oh i forgot to hit the add button make sure you press add that's very vital or else it won't exist <laughs> There we go. So now that works. We have our uh, git palette array thing. Now when we run it, hopefully it works if I did everything correctly. Hey, now you have your color. So we have this. Now you guys are probably wondering, I don't know why the background's not working. Oh, we never call the git background, I mean update background color. Um, so technically it works, I just never called it. So my bad, but now we can call in the function underscore ready statement and I'm just going to run the specific scene. Ow, my eyes. Okay. It's doing something wrong. Oh, very vital. This needs to be one. It needs to return the alpha value as well. And that still hurts. Okay, that's not right because that is not that color. That's not as... Again, my bad. You're supposed to divide that by 256. So divide the G value by 256. So now we should have the right colors. I wasn't converting correctly, so that, that was completely my bad. Okay, so now we can work on the outline. So I do have an outline script that will be in the description of this video. For now, I'm gonna copy and paste from my other project. Okay, so now I have the shader script. What's gonna happen is we're gonna have to have another sprite under our car. Then we're gonna have to give it the same sprite the reason why we do this is so the modulate doesn't affect the shader with it. And now in the material, we're going to have to add a new shader material. Go under this, make a new shader, and paste our code. And there you go, you got it all. So now in the shader, we're going to have to make this easier to apply. So we're going to press save. We're going to call this outline. So we can apply it to anything now. So we have our outline shader, and it's going to look a bit funky in the editor. We're going to set the one. Okay, so in the editor, it's going to give you full HD like this. But what we're, what's going to happen is make sure in your project settings, you have stretch mode the viewport under the window. What this is going to do is it's going to be pixel perfect. So now the outline, if for some reason you were getting the error that um, color controller does not exist, restart the editor. I Apparently it's an issue with Godot. I, I thought I was doing something wrong, but I restarted and it's working. So um, now we can move on to the actual outline of it so now to apply the color to the outline what you're going to want to do we're going to rename the sprite under here outline now to change the color of the outline what we're going to want to do is enter down then you're going to want to do a dollar sign outline dot this is accessing the outline get material so you can get our actual outline material which also allows us to get within the material set um outline color now we can change this to our global, well not global, but our color controller, color outline. We're setting that shader paragraph value of the outline color to our color controller out. So now, actually, what's happening here is we need to, actually, we're not setting it to these variables. I never use these variables. But if you want to make it easier to set the colors, what you can do is color, you could set color main equals and then we can do uh our get thing that we're doing down here where we're getting our power little gray value you can select this do that for zero then you set color outline then you do get palette array value 
and you do one and I forgot the air parenthesis. Then for color backgrounds, you can do the same. It goes get palette array value two. So now instead of setting this to the palette array value, we can just set this to our color background variable. So important, whenever we're changing our color palette, we have to re-update these values. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna put these in the function. And I'm gonna call this update color variables. And we're just gonna throw these into a function. So it updates them. And whenever you change a palette, you wanna update the color variables. Now we can just do color val line and right here, color controller dot color main. And it'll work the exact same way. It's just a lot nicer. Okay, there we go. And we can save each of these scripts. Now I can run. Now I get an error. Oh, also make sure we call update color variables right here. I updated the background color without updating those. So you want to make sure those are updated before you update the background color. So now you see you have an outline that's changed and you have your background and you have your car. So well, now let's experiment with some more colors so i hope you guys found this video useful there's a lot of different things with color palettes and stuff if you want two different colors on one sprite you're gonna have to separate them into sprites and do it that way that's our limitation with doing this i don't know shaders so i don't know how to do it with some shaders i bet you can replace colors within shaders but i am not advanced in shaders yet so i did start a discord server down in the description um, if you need help with anything, I encourage you to go to the Discord because there's a lot of helpful people already on the server, including myself. I can help you out with anything you need help with relating to Godot or any computer issues in general. Anything will work. Um, if you guys have any other ideas for other tutorials, I'll be able to do them. I'm planning on doing a tutorial series soon, another one, and I'm hoping to do a lot more of them. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.